Hello and welcome to today's health education lesson. So first of all guys, can we all turn to wave and say a big hello to our friends on camera. Hello. And we'll begin by doing our meditation sequence. So I will sit down, take two fingers, find our heart center, left hands on our laps and close our eyes. When you're ready guys, you can open your eyes and come back to the room. And next we'll do our stretch sequence. So let's stand up and push in our chairs. And we'll begin by stretching up high to the sky. High as we can. And then let's go down low, touch our toes. Back up high. And this time, can we go tippy toe high? And while we're there, let's have a wave. And then back down to touch our toes. Stand up straight and let's shake it out, guys. Arms and legs, shake it out. And we'll do some rotations. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. And now for some stretches, we'll do five to our right. One. Two, three, four, five, and then five stretches to our left. One, two, three, four, five. Excellent, guys, and let's have another shake. Shake it out one more time. And to finish, we will do five claps. One, two, three, four, five. Excellent, guys, have a seat. So in our previous health education lesson, we learned about a very important group of people in our lives. We've already learned about family. Who was the next group of people we learned about, guys? friends, or we learned how to build and develop good friendships. So let's write that phrase on the board first. Good, G-O-O-D. And then friendships, F-R-E-N-D. Friends. And then when we're friends with people, we call friendships. S-H-I-P-S. -S. So all together, guys, good 
friendships. friendships. Yes. And in our previous health education lesson, we learned about some important factors and behaviours that we need to display and our friends need to display to us too so that we can have good friendships. Now, who can remember some of the key words? What type of behaviours or quality do we look for in friends? Kind, yes. Kind is very important. If we're with our friends, it's important to be kind. We want our friends to feel good. We want them to be happy. And one of the ways we can do that is to be kind. K-I-N-D. So kind is a very good start, guys, but there was a few more. Any ideas? Caring. Caring, yes. We've got kind. Kind is something to be all of the time. But sometimes our friends might not be feeling good. They might be sick or they might be sad. And they are the times when we need to care for them. So one of the important qualities of good friendships, caring. C-A-R-I-N-G. Kind and caring. Very good. Now another thing we learned about, is it a good thing to tell lies? Is it good to tell lies? No, it's a bad thing to tell lies. Should we tell lies to our friends? No. We should always be honest. Yes, honest means tell the truth. No need to lie to anyone, our families, our friends, our teachers. It's always best to tell the truth and be honest. H-O-N-E-S-T. So three very good, important factors in good friendships, kind, caring, honest. Yes, and then another word similar to honest, but beginning with T. If somebody, particularly a friend, tells us an important secret, should we tell other people? No. In that case, what should we display? Prow, I think you just said it. Trust, exactly. If our friends tell us something important and maybe quite personal, we don't want to go off and tell other people our friend's secrets because our friend needs to be able to trust us. And trust is spelled T-R-U-S-T. Excellent. But sometimes even the best of friends will disagree. And sometimes good friends might argue. But the important thing to do is that once the argument is finished, should we hold on to the bad feeling or should we let the bad feeling go? We should always let the bad feeling go. And therefore, two important ways of a good friendship to forget about arguments, forgive and forget. The first thing to do, forgive. F-O-R-G-I-V-E. And what forgive means is that we don't hold on to the bad feeling with our friend. We can just say, don't worry, I forget about it now. I forgive. And then we also need to forget. F-O-R-G-E-T. So three more important factors in developing good friendships. Trust, forgive, forget. Yes. And another thing that we learned. When we are good friends with somebody, should we talk about our friends to other people behind their back? No. We should never say anything bad or gossip about our friends to other people. Therefore, one word and an important factor in being a good friend, loyal. L-O-Y-A-L. Loyal. Loyal means to always stick up for our friends, always support them. Even when other people say bad things, we should stand up for them and say, that's not true. My friend is a nice person. That's why she or he is my friend. 
So guys, we've got some very good factors regarding good friendships on the board from a previous lesson. Kind, caring, honest, trust, forgive, forget, and loyal. Now, thinking about your own friendships, has anybody got any other words they would like to add? Maybe that we haven't looked at yet. What sort of qualities do you look for in your friends? Considerate. Okay, yes, we can have considerate too. C O N S I D E R A T E. Another important factor in a good friendship considerate. Considerate is quite similar to caring. It means that we should always respect our friend's feelings and opinions. If our friend wants to tell us something, we should listen and we should take them feelings on board. So therefore, we should be considerate. And that is a brief recap of the previous lesson, which was about good friendships and the qualities to display so we, so we can have good friendships. So guys, that was excellent. Very well done. And what we're going to do in today's health education lesson is we're going to move on and we're going to look at some particular type of behaviours. And the behaviours that we're going to look at today is what can you see when you look at me, guys? What is this? Shirt, pants, shoes, and altogether they are clothes. Now, I am here at school and what is my job? Teacher, so am I dressed appropriately? Am I okay for teaching? Okay, yes. What would happen if tomorrow I come to school and I wear shorts, sunglasses, hat, flip-flops? Would that be good? Why would that not be good? Because I would not be dressed appropriately. What we're looking at in today's lesson is the types of clothes that we need to wear for particular situations. Such as now, I wear a shirt, pants and shoes because I am teaching. Should I be wearing a football kit now? No. No. When should I wear the football kit? Or when will you guys wear your sports kit? Will you wear your sports kit in classroom? No. Where will you wear your sports kit? at the weekend or when you play sports. You see, in today's lesson, we're going to look at dressing appropriately and the different situations when we need to wear different types of dresses. And it all comes back to one word, respect. By dressing appropriately, we show the relative amount of respect we need to for our places and our friends. So what we've got now is a PowerPoint presentation for our students to observe and listen to about dressing appropriately. So let's turn to look at the TV screen, please, guys. So now let's take a look at our PowerPoint presentation about appropriate dress. And what this means is wearing the right clothes for the right occasion. By dressing appropriately, we can look good when we're supposed to, for the right situation. Now you can see here in the picture, we can see children. And where are these children from? Thailand, yes. How do you know? You can tell by the clothes, you see. These children are dressing appropriately. They are wearing traditional Thai dress. Now, do you think these children are going to play volleyball? No. no. They're not playing sports, are they? Do you think these children are going to school? No. no. They're not wearing their school clothes. What do we think these children are doing? Where are they going? Dance. Going to dancing, maybe. Or to do some Thai traditional cultural events. So you can see, by wearing the correct clothes, 
they are dressing appropriately for their situation. If we show others respect, we will be given the same respect back in return. Yes, and you can see in the picture, respect, give it, get it. And what this means, if we treat other people properly, they will treat us properly in return. If we treat other people nicely, they will treat us nice. But if we treat other people bad, they will probably treat us bad too. And this is what respect is. To get respect, we need to earn it. And we earn it by giving it. One of the best ways to show respect to ourselves and others is by dressing politely. Yes, just like all you guys now. Now you are at school and you are all wearing your school uniform, which is the right thing to do. So you are showing respect to your teachers and your school by wearing the correct dress. What would happen if you come to school today in your PE kit? Would be a problem. The teachers would ask, why are you wearing your PE kit? You are here to study. So by dressing appropriately and politely, you're showing the correct respect. Males and females should wear the correct clothes for their different activities. Yes, you can see all of the different people in the picture here. They all have different jobs. Who can tell some of the jobs? What do we think this guy does here in the green? What's his job? Soldier. I think so, yes. Look at his uniform. He's dressed like a soldier. How about here, this guy? What does anybody think he does? Maybe he works on a ship. Yes. Well, you can see all of the different people are wearing uniform. And each way that they do it, they're dressing appropriately for their situation. Shorts, tank tops, and sleeveless shirts are only appropriate for sports and the beach. Yes. Would you dress like this coming to school? No. Not appropriate, is it? It's the wrong clothes for the wrong situation. These children are at the beach and they're dressed like they should be at the beach. For example, now you're all wearing your school clothes. If you go to the beach, will you wear your school clothes? No, you'll wear your beach clothes. And that's what we mean by dressing appropriately. Men and boys should always wear clean and respectful clothes. Yes, like the boys in this picture here. Where are these boys going? School. You can tell because they're wearing their school clothes. Are these boys going to the beach? No. no. Are these boys going to play football? No. no. They're going to school and they're dressed appropriately. And you notice their clothes are clean and well kept. So they're showing the right level of respect to their school. Shabby, Shabby. or dirty clothes will not set a good example or encourage respect. Yes. What would happen if you came to school looking like this? Would you have a problem? Yes, I think you'd have a problem. 
I think you'd be told to go home and change your clothes because you're not dressed appropriately and you're not showing respect to your school. Women and girls should always wear polite clothing appropriate for the situation. Yes. Like these girls here in the picture. What do you think these girls are doing? Dancing or maybe going to the temple? Yes. Are they dressed appropriately? No. I think so. I think they should be. They look like they're dressed nice and ready to go to the temple or to a dance. Should they go and play volleyball looking like this? No. no. They're not dressed appropriately. They would wear their sports kit to play volleyball. Should they go to the beach looking like this? No. If they're going to the seaside on a trip, look like that? No. They're not dressed appropriately. So you see the different types of clothes for the different situations. Clothes that are too revealing should not be worn. Skirts should not be too short. Yes, like the lady in this picture here. Look at her skirt. Too short. Does it look good? No. No. You can see her skirt is too short. So she's not showing respect and she's not dressing appropriately. Her skirt should be to here by her knee. Her skirt is far too high and it doesn't set good example. No respect. If we follow the simple rules about appropriate dressing everyone has respect yes like us here we all dress appropriately and we all show respect I come to school dressed like I should be as a teacher you come to school dressed like you should be as students that way everybody shows respect and everybody is happy because everybody is dressing appropriately. Any questions, guys? Okay, that was brilliant. Very well done. <laughs> Welcome back to class. We hope your students enjoyed the PowerPoint presentation so that they can begin to understand what it means to dress appropriately. We need to wear the correct clothes for the correct situations. And by dressing appropriately, we will convey respect. And then we will receive respect back in return. And we've got an exercise coming up for our students to demonstrate their knowledge. But first of all, guys, time for our stretch sequence. So let's stand up and push in our chairs. And for this sequence, we'll begin by walking on the spot. Stop. Jogging on the spot. Stop. Jogging on the spot again. Stop. Turn left. Turn left. Turn left again. And left. Hello. Jogging on the spot. Stop. Jogging on the stop. Jog it, stop. Jogging on the spot. Quickly! Stop. Quickly, stop. Turn right. Turn left. Turn right. Turn right again. Turn right. And right. Hello. Hello. And to finish, we will do five star jumps. One, two, Three, four. Excellent, guys. Have a seat. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do a board exercise 
for our students to think of some different places and the different ways for dressing appropriately. So let's write that phrase on the board first. Dressing. D R E S S I N G. Dressing. What dressing means is deciding and putting on clothes. Appropriately, A P P R O P R I A T E L Y. Appropriately. Appropriately means correctly and politely. So all together, guys, dressing appropriately. Okay, now what we need is examples of different places. And the first one we'll use is the place where we are now. Where are we now? School. Yes, we're at school now. S C H O O L. Okay, well, who can give me some examples of different places where you also go? Temple. Very good and a very important, nice place. Temple. T E M P L E. Okay, that's two. Let's see if we can get two more places, guys. The beach. Yes. We can think about what to wear when we go to the beach. B E A C H. Beach. And also, we have temple and also sports. S P O R T S. Okay. So we have four different places on the board now. We have school, temple, beach, sports. Are these four places all the same? No. Will we be able to wear the same clothes doing all of these different things? No. So let's try to think now for the next few minutes what type of clothes we should wear in each particular place or situation. For example, who can tell me something that they're wearing now at school? What type of clothes are you wearing, guys? Shirt. Yes. Now you are wearing shirt. S-H-I-R-T. Okay. Now, asking the girls, what are you wearing below your shirt? Not pants. Skirt. Yes, you're wearing a skirt. S K I R T. And how about the boys? Like me, what am I wearing? Pants. Yes. P A N T S. And on our feet, we're wearing shoes. S H O E S. Okay, guys, so we've got four different types of clothing that we wear at school. We have shirt, skirt, pants, shoes. Okay, now, are these types of clothes all dressing appropriately for school? Yes, we can wear these at school. But now, let's think about the beach. What will we wear when we go to the beach? What type of clothes? When you go to the seaside or the beach, do you wear skirt? Shirt? Shoes? Pants? So what types of clothes do you wear at the beach? Shorts, exactly. You'd wear shorts. Do you wear shorts at school? No. We wear shorts at the beach. H O R T S, shorts. Now, how about if it's really sunny and we want to protect our head? What do we wear on our head? Hat. Are you wearing a hat now? No. Are you wearing a hat to school? No. But we can wear a hat 
at the beach. H-A-T. Now, thinking about the beach, if it's really sunny and we want to protect our eyes, what can we wear? Sunglasses. Excellent, Dan. Shall we wear sunglasses at school? No, it's not dressing appropriately. But at the beach, S-U-N-G-L-A-S-S-E-S, sunglasses. Now, when we go to the beach, we need to wear things on our feet to protect them. But they're not shoes. We can wear sandals. Yes. S A N D A L S. So look at the difference between the clothes we've got at school and the clothes we've got at the beach. Can you see the different ways for dressing appropriately? At the beach, we have shorts, hats, sunglasses. Sandals. Yes. But now, let's think about this place. Very special place, the temple. When you go to the temple, very important, what do we have to remove? Shoes. So make sure when we go to the temple, no, no shoes. You see? This is dressing appropriately for the temple. No shoes. Now, what other clothes can you wear at the temple? When you go to the temple, can you wear a skirt? Yes, you can wear a skirt. Guys, it's up to you. What do you wear at the temple? No shoes. You use a tie. No shoes. Skirt. Okay, now what other clothes do you wear at the temple? Pants. Yes, the boys can wear pants too. A-N-T-S. And how about for sports? When you're playing sports, do you wear skirt? No. No. Shirt. What type of shirt? T-shirt. Exactly. Well done. T-shirt. S-H-I-R-T. Now what else? Shorts. You see, sometimes we can wear the same clothes for certain places. Shorts. S-H-O-R-T-S. And what else do you wear, guys wear when you're playing sports? What type of shoes? Sports shoes. Yes. When we're playing sports, we will always wear our sports kit. P. O R T S sports kit and shoes. So you can see the different places and the different ways in which we can be dressing appropriately. School, shirt, skirt, pants, shoes, temple. No shoes. Very important. Skirt. Pants. And at the beach, shorts. Hat. Sunglasses. Sandals. And then finally, if we want to play sports, we might wear t shirts, shorts, sports kit, and sports shoes. And this is an example of the different ways that we can be dressing appropriately for the different types of exercises or situations. And guys, that was brilliant. Well done. <laughs> and now it's time for our worksheet part of the lesson. So teachers, what you'll need to do is give each of the students in your classroom their own worksheet. And what we've got, guys, is a worksheet with two empty boxes. What I want you to do today is draw a picture of yourselves, but in two different situations. The first situation, at the beach. So your first picture, draw and colour what clothes you would wear if you're at the beach. And we already have some examples on the board. And then, for our second picture, 
not at the beach, at the temple. Or if any of our students are Christian, at the church. Will we wear the same clothes at both of the places? No. no. So what our students need to do is demonstrate their understanding of dressing appropriately by drawing and colouring themselves in the two different places. And they can use some of the vocabulary we already have on the board if they can't think. But what's the first thing to do, guys? Write your names on top. And give our students around 15 minutes for this and make sure they do some nice colouring too because we want to see lots of colours. So, Lakau, this one's for you. Bang Bon for you. You're welcome. Down for you. You're welcome. Chu, here's yours. You're welcome. Nadia for you. You're welcome. Pat, there's yours. And Pat, boom, you're welcome. So, guys, this is a time for you to be creative. Imagine you're going to the beach, or imagine you're at the beach. What type of clothes will you wear? And then, once you've done your beach drawing, think about what you think or what you wear when you go to the temple. And what we'll do with the two different pictures, we'll be able to demonstrate dressing appropriately in different situations. And if you can't think, we have on the board the beach, shorts, hat, sunglasses, sandals. But at the temple, we wouldn't wear these clothes. Remember, at the temple, you don't wear shoes. No shoes at the temple. Skirt, pants, and shirt. Or maybe you might want to wear traditional Thai dress. So it's up to you. And don't forget, we want to see colours too. So bang pon, this one, at the seaside. What do you wear when you go to the seaside? Shorts, sunglasses, hat. And then temple. What do you wear at the temple? At the seaside. Temple. Down, okay. You went to the seaside last time. So what did you wear when you went to the seaside? Your last holiday at the seaside. Think about what you wore. Hat, sunglasses, shorts. And then when you went to the temple, were you dressed the same? No. Different. Excellent, Pak Bung. So, Chu, we have to do two pictures. The first one, at the seaside. What do you wear if you go to the beach or the seaside? And then, at the temple. Yes. <laughs> and don't forget to colour too guys make sure our students colour because we want the worksheets to look nice with colours if I go to the beach I like to wear beach hat sunglasses T-shirt, shorts, and actually, if not sandals, flip-flops. But if I go to the temple, I dress a lot more respectfully. I will wear pants, shirt, and take off my shoes. Welcome back to class. We hope your students enjoyed the worksheet activity where they had to draw their different pictures based on the situation showing how they can dress appropriately when they go to the seaside and the beach, and also how they dress differently and also appropriately at the temple or the church.
And that was excellent, guys, so very well done, a good exercise. <laughs> and that's all we've got time for today. So we hope you've enjoyed the lesson and now understand what it means to dress appropriately. Always show respect to ourselves and others by wearing the correct clothes for the correct situation. And we'll see you again soon for the next lesson. So can we turn to wave and say goodbye, guys? Bye-bye. See you again soon.